I am blessed to stand here with my dear brother Carl and my dear sister Carmen. And we stand here once again because we're trying to keep the pressure on the powers that be to let them know that we have a deep and abiding love for our precious brothers and sisters who are being brutalized and terrorized by too many police, not just here in New York City, but around the country. And we will never forget the preciousness of our dear sister, Yana Stanley Jones, in Detroit. We'll never forget our precious sister, Sandra Blair, Eric, brother Eric Gardner. We can go on and on and on and on. We want the country to know, we want the city and the world to know that our resistance is not a fad or a fashion. It's a way of life, that we're going to keep the pressure on, we're going to stay in the streets, we're willing to go to jail and tell justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. And that means that when police engage in arbitrary police power and when they actually kill fellow citizens, they must go to jail. We want to break the culture of silence in police departments that think that somehow it's normal and natural to kill fellow citizens who are disproportionately poor and disproportionately chocolate, black and brown and red, and get away with it. Now we know our mayor just got back from the Middle East in Israel. I didn't hear a mumbling word about the Palestinians on the vicious no. Israeli occupation. Right. Nothing right. wrong with being in solidarity with innocent citizens and civilians anywhere, be they white, black, white, Jewish, or Palestinian, but when you don't say a mumbling word about Israeli occupation that says something about being silent about what's happening in your own city where too many of the poor children and, and, and working people are not being treated fairly and in fact are being treated deeply unjustly. We make connections of the wretched of the earth, be they in Latin America, be they in the Middle East, be they in Africa or Asia, or be they in Oakland, Detroit, Chicago, or New York City. That's the kind of vision we're bringing to bear, and that's why you get a revolutionary communist, a revolutionary Christian, and a magnificent freedom fighter, and Sister Carmen, all coming together on Saturday in the march and the two days prior in the action. Whose side are we on? Whose side are we on? That is the question. And it's not an academic question, no. just an academic question. Yet academics rarely confront that question. Yeah, yeah. They're very good at coming up with theories that separate and divide us. Yeah. The subculture, the uh, animal, animal that people are experiencing, the social disorganization in the counterculture or in the subculture of the gangs and so on and so on. Rarely do they confront their own moral bankruptcy because yes. they are so involved in their careers yeah. and stepping forward uh, to participate in the enhancement of their career. They have and do play a major role in setting up the intellectual foundations, the ideas, the paradigms that politicians pay attention to, that police chiefs pay attention to that police on the beat are expected to follow. Yet there's very little understanding of the consequences, very little moral integrity uh, and understanding of what these theories do to people because, quite frankly, most academics stay in their offices, they're concerned with departmental politics. Yes. So rise up October should also mean Academics rise out of your damn chairs. Yeah. Get out of the office. Yeah. Get out of that boring yeah. departmental meeting yes. and get the hell out down the, the street. And we have begun the struggle. We are taking it to another level. We will not back down in the face of repression. We will not be told it is too complicated to talk about the murder of our youth. We are going to talk about it. And the world is going to have to look at what they are doing to our youth. The world is going to have to see that in this homeland of freedom and democracy, as they like to call it, 
a genocide is being go is being carried out. They talk about tyrants and human rights violations while they run torture chambers like Rikers Island while they sanction police terror and murder and say a cop only has to say he's afraid of black people to get away with it. This must stop. And we are out to stop it. Which side are you on? Boy, I mean, this is Rise Up October. Rise Up October is really a continuation of, of rights we've been fighting for since the 60s. I and mean, for the last 50 years, people have been applauding our successes in civil rights and racial acceptance. And all we're seeing is the same thing we saw 50 years ago. Yeah. People are getting killed daily. We see the statistics. It's gone from, what, once every eight hours? Well, still, like three a day. People are getting killed by law enforcement. From people that we are paying with our tax dollars to serve and protect us are killing us. What world in, in our consciousness does this make sense? It makes no sense at all. And that's why I'm, I'm so proud to be here right now, standing with all my brothers and sisters, my revolutionary Christian, yeah. my revolutionary communist. I guess I'd be a revolutionary green right now. Yeah! <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I love it because, you know what, when we share this call for Rise Up October, all of my Green Party brothers and sisters, from this state to the, to the island of Hawaii, said we are disgusted. We, we're, we just can't believe what's going on in this country. If this was any other country, we'd be going to war with them right now. Yeah. Yeah. We'd be going in there saying, you know, we got to install a democracy in there because yeah. people are getting yeah. killed yeah. at an outrageous yeah. rate here. Three a day. Three a day people are getting killed by law enforcement, and that's not right. And not even the people that are killed by law enforcement, like we talked about here, Rikers Island. People are going to Rikers, and they're not even being charged which is really just an extension of the Obama uh, campaign. Of, we can just kidnapped. lock you up without giving you any charges. That's legal right. kidnapping. Yeah. It is legal kidnapping, and it's state-sponsored terrorism. Yeah, I will right. say that. That's right. People are being tortured on a daily basis, killed they're on a daily basis. Yeah. And the only reason they're able to do this is because we don't have numbers in the street now to come out and say, this is wrong. Right. We, we fall prey to the, the Democrats and Republicans that come out and say, hey, we'll be here, we'll take this issue on for you, we'll lead it to the end, and they don't do anything for that's it. That's right. That's and that's right. why I'm so proud to be here as a, as a Green Party member or whatever party you are, but if you're in support of Rise Up October and you're for the people, then you should be out here. More than 40 families of people killed by police who are going to be in Times Square Thursday, October 22nd, for no more stolen lives, say their names. They're going to be joined by more family members who couldn't come on Thursday but will come on Friday, and some are taking red eyes in to be there on Saturday. We will have more than 100 family members from around the country joining together with dozens of family members from the New York area throughout this uh, time period a collective voice of those who have suffered the horror of having a loved one snatched from them, their lives stolen by those who have sworn to protect and serve, is forging, being forged through this effort. And it, I was on a conference call with like 25, 30 family members last night. They were talking about what they were doing in terms of what the mothers of the disappeared do in Argentina, in terms of what the mothers of the 43 missing students in Mexico are doing in Mexico. They are saying there has to be a collective voice of those of us whose lives who have had loved ones stolen from us by law enforcement. And that's something that's coming together. And it's not easy to do that. Lots of funds need to be raised. I mean, when you figure bringing 100 family members from around the country to New York City, putting them up, feeding them, transportation both ways. You're talking like about $1,000 a person. So we've been raising money. Just go to riseupoctober.org and then you can find the thing to click on to go to the, fund, the crowdfund page. What? What we have done is we have gone into the communities and we have gathered the stories of people who have loved ones in Rikers or people who have spent time in Rikers. And if you go into the projects, any part of the city, 
a lot of other places too, but where we've been mainly has been in the projects. Everybody has an intimate experience with Rikers. We've been going to the people, not to the warden, not to the prison officials. They have been gone to, they have been appealed to, they have been, their crimes there have been documented. There's a pattern of, of guards who've been convicted of abuse actually being promoted. The violence in Rikers has escalated in recent years. This has been documented and so our approach has been to recognize that what's been missing is not the exposure, not the lawsuits, not the documentation, not the truth telling even but the people who are willing to go and put ourselves on the line to say that this must stop. And we have recognized that it's gone on for decades. There have been six class action lawsuits filed against Rikers that have been settled. Many more that have been filed. Six that have been settled since 1990. Each one promises drastic reforms. More cameras inside. More um, use of uh, force requirements on guards. Each of them has the same promises, and yet over and over again we find that the guards take inmates to the one or two places remaining without cameras. And there will always be somewhere without cameras. And they beat these inmates, and they injure these inmates, and so we are going with that behind us to, to stand in front of the entrance of Rikers Island and put ourselves in the line because Rikers Island must be shut down. No communication with the administration? Or no. No. The no. crucial feature of any move from an ice age to an age that begins to melt with just the breaking of the back of fear. What Ferguson signified was the breaking of the back of fear among young people especially. Young people have always served as a vanguard and once they are fearless, once they are courageous, it's just a matter of them having comprehensive vision and having an analysis of empire, capitalism, patriarchy, homophobia, coming together and saying, we're going to change this mess that we find ourselves in. We wish you a right to students at riseupoctober.org. Um, and they, we are on a mission to organize as many campuses, as many youth as possible. We should write in, we should be part of organizing on their campus, we should be part of speaking in classrooms, we should be part of bringing together all their friends, going out to the middle of campus, and actually letting people know that, look, we are marching, we are going to be part of Rise of October, we are going to be part of these acts of civil disobedience, and we're calling on you to be part of that as well.